Charles Nablet, you're one of the original members of the Freedom Singers from the 1960s, but you didn't set out to be a Freedom Singer. You were yeah. kind of recruited, right? Yes. How'd that happen? Uh, I was working in Mississippi. Although we sang, uh, what happened is they wanted this group and they called me. I was working in Mississippi at the time. But you were working in Mississippi for SNCC, which for is SNCC. the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Committee, which, back up a little bit, somebody just tuning in, what, what was that? That was a young civil rights organization. Okay. Uh, a courageous organization. And in fact, that was an organization that decided to go into Mississippi. And we're talking 1960. 1960. Okay. 61. To go into Mississippi because some of our people had did research and found out if we cracked Mississippi, that the whole rest of the South would be easy. So then it would fall if we could That's just right. crack, Mississippi. crack Mississippi. So who was like, who was coordinating this? I mean, was there a central source? like a national SNCC organization? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so you became a field secretary? That's right. So they send you out into That's the right. field. Right. And you were like courageous, 20-year-old, I'm going to go out there. What, were people saying, are you nuts? <laughs> right? We were just young. Uh, we, were, <laughs> we were just young. Uh, we uh, decided that we had to do that. The things that we did, we decided we had to do it. It had to be done. And I didn't have any feeling, I didn't have no qualms that I would get killed. No qualms whatsoever, I'd get killed. And we went down and started working uh, in Mississippi because Bob Moses, he went and did some research in Mississippi and found out how, what we could do there. So. He met a man named Amzie Moore. He was a World War II veteran. He had a lot of World War II veterans was ready to work at Mississippi. Mm -hmm. they, he had thought about what he could do to change things in Mississippi. He had dreamed and he thought about registering people to vote. If we could get enough people to vote, that we could vote them people out of office. Because a lot of places in Mississippi, there are more blacks than whites. Uh huh. You just had to give them the courage That's right. to go to the polls That's right. and vote. And he, we looked upon him as a genius. He was, he went to Harvard and everywhere. Huh. And he was really brilliant. And uh, So you put your trust in this guy. Yeah. Here you are, yeah. He come back and told us that he wasn't no genius. He said, I listened my way through the world. <laughs> I love that. I love that story. So you go into Mississippi. You said a minute ago, no qualms about getting killed because you're going in. It's like a war zone. Right. Do you have experiences where you felt like you were in a war zone? I had a feeling where I thought I was going to get killed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just one thing. Uh, we were in a car, station wagon, and it was looking for us. We didn't know it. The three, authorities. Yeah. And the three man. Ro they had a three man roadblock. They had a car behind you, car would pull up beside you, and the car in front would slow down, and you couldn't get away. You were boxed in. And they did that to us. And the guy in the back seat wasn't watching like he should. Uh. <laughs> and they shot that car up. They shot it up. And the weirdest sound I've ever heard in my life was bullets coming through metal. But missed you all? I was down, I was, I was down on the floor. I didn't know you could get down there. <laughs> <laughs> that low? <laughs> but you did, and none of you were injured? None of it? us got hit. We, they drove off, they thought we were all dead. They drove off. And uh, we went to Mrs. Hamer's house, Miss Fannie Lou Hamer's house. In Mississippi? Uh -huh. Was this in Mississippi? Mississippi. And nobody said a word. Went to her house. And I went to a mirror. I looked in the mirror to see if I was all dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have no holes in me, uh, anything. And I, uh, I just walked around for a couple of days to get used to find out what happened. Yeah. 
you know, how, why was I still alive? And uh, after that, a few days, uh, we were back on the road again. Was there a time when you really felt like you made a difference? Yeah, what I, what I felt like I really made a difference was when people decided to stand up. Decided to stand up. You had to do a lot of things because to convince people, especially black people, that you were serious, that you were going to be there. You weren't going to study and get them in trouble and leave, that you were going to be there. It's called trust. That's right. They had to trust you. That's right. So we had to go into cotton fields. We had to stay there until they'd come after you. they get there after the organizers. They'd come, and you noticed they were coming because they'd hold the guns up above the cotton. And you could see them coming, and when you see them coming, you got to go. And we would be back there the next day. And people found out that we were cr either crazy or we were serious. <laughs> and that's how we got people to register to vote. You know, uh, and in fact, they put you in jail. They put us in jail for registering people to vote on a charge of criminal anarchy. In Mississippi? In Mississippi. Criminal anarchy, which is There's a civil, civil war? war law. Civil war law that carried the death penalty. And uh, they put us on death row. So what we did, we shaved our heads because you have to shave your head before they execute you. So we all shaved our heads. And what was interesting was the black prisoners. They were looking at us. And uh, they told us, uh, you know, if our reputation wasn't so bad, we'd join you guys. If, if their reputation yeah. wasn't so bad? They, they were afraid they'd hurt the cause. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of young people, a lot of, would do that. They'd help us in a lot of ways, but they didn't want to get us involved because uh, they had a bad reputation. They didn't want their problems to become your problems. Right. Yeah. And in Potsdam. That's the prison in Mississippi. That's, a, that's the worst prison I've ever seen. They kill people in there. They work people to death. How long were you in there? 30 days. 30 days. Who got you out? Because SNCC probably had legal representation. Yeah, they couldn't, they okay. couldn't make that stick. Okay. They couldn't make that stick. And so they got us, they got us out of there. But before What did that teach you, though? But before, we, before we left, they put us on the chain gang. And the guy who had us out on the chain gang, he uh, took the chains off of us, threw his gun one way, Threw his ammunition another way. He had a dog named Rib. He's black. He had gold fangs in his mouth. He's, he's psyched to see. He said, if you, can, if you niggas can go, get away from here and run. Before I can shoot you, I'll let you go. So we had a lot of guys from seminaries come out of seminaries. One of the guys looked at him and said, we're not going to leave you. He said, God sent us to you. He said, if we left you, we'd go to hell. He said, any time a man would rather stand up with another man with a gun and shoot him rather than going home and being with his wife and children, he's, he's not right. You know, that man is insane. He said, God sent us here to, to save you. And the guy prayed for him. And he took us back to prison without the chains. And he came to my cell the next day, he said, if y'all keep this up, we won't be white no more. I said, what that fool talking about? <laughs> what a story. He won't be white no more. Now I'm to think, I said, that guy's poor, real poor. He's not paying him any money. And uh, <laughs> the only thing that he has, only thing that he has, it's his white skin. It makes him something. His white skin. The privilege that he has with his white skin. That's all he got. I said, that man is pitiful. That's very pitiful. 
and uh, and you met people like that. So that that little not little it was a thirty day stint in one of the worst prisons in Mississippi. <laughs> But you learned something from that yeah. that you could take moving forward yeah. as you pushed for civil rights. Yeah. yeah? Charles Neblett is who we're talking to, one of the original founding members of the Freedom Singers and um, a field secretary in SNCC, which was the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in the 1960s. This is Coffee Near Me. We're at the Flying Pig in Russellville, Kentucky. I'm Barbara Deeb. Remember, you can continue the conversation in the comments section. We'd love to hear from you. Cheers. Thank you for sharing those stories. Amazing. <laughs>